Hi everyone, this is part two of Support Vector Machines Classifier, Hard Margin SVMs. So in part one, what we saw was the goals of achieving hyperplane separation, and we also saw maximum margin classifier, and what the formulation was, which was minimizing the half W norm square with respect to a condition which we had derived. Okay, so in today's session, in today's video, we are actually going to be spending time on the dual formulation and how it comes along as being practical. Okay, so first, the formulation that we saw in part one, we're going to be calling it the primal formulation. Okay, and that is given out here, which is minimizing half W norm the whole square with respect to W times. W transpose X plus T plus B greater than or equal to 1 for all values of X and Y. Okay. One of the things we should know for this particular objective function and the constraint is that both the objective function and the constraint are convex in nature. Okay. Now that's very important for us because that convexity nature it gives us certain principles from the convex optimization space. Okay. The key theorem for us to understand here is for convex optimization problems, the solutions of the primal formulation, which we have done as part of part one, is the same as the dual formulation problem, which we will be seeing today. Okay, so that's the key takeaway. Now let's look at what is the convex optimization problem in a general sense. So given a function that we are trying to minimize, so minimize f of x, and that is subject to a constraint g of x less than or equal to 0 for all, all values of i. Now, this particular value uh, that we are trying to constrain it is the one in our SVM's case happens to be the y into w transpose x plus b greater than or equal to 1. And this objective function f of x happens to be half of w norm the whole square. Okay. Now, if we look at it from a Lagrangian perspective, a Lagrangian of this particular objective function with the constraint can also be written as f of x minus sum of mu i g of x, where the mu i's are actually the penalties for violating the Lagrange multiplier. Okay. Now, the Lagrange dual optimization is going to do a max min lag range of x comma mu. So what does it mean? It is trying to maximize the penalty term if the conditions are violated and it is trying to minimize the f of x. Okay, so that's what we have written here in a general form. Now if we extend the same idea or apply the same idea in for our case, which is the dual formulation for our SVM problem in hand but then what we have is we get half of w transpose w so this is nothing but it's the same as half of w norm the whole square because the w norm the whole square can also be written as w transpose w plus the summation of alpha i times 1 minus w transpose x plus b into y okay so this particular thing is the constraint we have imposed and what we have done here is we have taken a one minus because we wanted to get it to the other side okay and we have alpha i which is always greater than zero for the data points which are having uh, the importance with respect to the support vectors okay so this is the lagrangian and this is not the optimization formulation. So what we have to do is now we have to take a differentiation. We have to take, we have to basically take derivatives of this particular function. And when we simplify it, what we get is we convert it back into a, a maximization problem. So going from a minimization to a maximization problem is all about inversing your existing function. Okay, so now we have converted it into a maximization problem as part of the simplification. And what we do get 
very interestingly is the function which is a sum of 1 to uh, n alpha i minus half of summation of i comma j a i a j y i y j x i transpose x j so what is interesting to see here is we don't have w term or the b term they got basically when we simplified it they got replaced with alphas or in terms of alphas okay so this particular maximization problem can be solved through a gradient descent and that's the most interesting approach we are going to be taking now now let's stepping forward if we were to optimize this particular set of a problem then now let's look at what tends to happen so what actually tends to happen is now we are going to have a variety of these points various points on either side which are actually forming the margins and these points fundamentally will have a non-zero value if they are going to be forming a support vector okay for the points which have zero they have no particular weightage for our margin calculation therefore their values are zero and they are being uh, left out there but these points that have a value of non-zero like 0.8 here and then 1.4 and then this particular value which has got 0 0.6 0 0.6 and these are the points that are important because they are actually the support vector okay that's a very important thing to know number one number two is from here from this particular equation once we have alphas derived we already know what the x are and the y's are because it's a training set. We can back calculate w and b as w is summation of 1 to n alpha i, y i, x i, straightforward product for each of the value, and b is equal to the y i minus w transpose x i. So this is the difference between the derived weights or the coefficients for our input matrix in independent variable subtracted from the yi so in notion of linear regression this is almost like the error term between the actual versus the predicted okay so that's an important takeaway for us to go from here and what is very important to know is that the theorem proves that the maximum value this particular derivative that we got which we simplified is the same as it's going to give us the same result as the minimization problem that we earlier saw in part one okay so that's all for today's uh, video in the next video we would be covering the uh, soft margin SVM so please stay tuned and like the video if you enjoyed it thank you